I've lost you, but I hope all's well. My name is Kirsty, Crafting Kirsty here on YouTube and also over on Instagram. It is Saturday the 6th of April 2024 and I'm back back with a regular floss tube, quilty tube, crafty tube update. I haven't done one since the beginning of February, I think. Um, I have, however, recorded two videos in between. First one of which I had the special guest appearance of um, my friend Janet Dodd came on and was discussing her six for 60 next year, the which she intends wants to, or the projects she wants to start next year. Um, and I was just sort of taking her through the whole how to basically film a YouTube video. I think she'd like to start her own channel. She's quite busy at the moment, but hopefully in a couple of months time, she'll be able to put one out there. Thank you for all the lovely comments on that video. It's very kind of you. And then the other video I filmed was a fully finishing video where I had an absolute finish fest of a whole load of projects that have been sitting in the bag of shame for years, <laughs> quite literally years, some of them. Um, and I spent most of February and a bit of March just turning things into pillows and flat folds and all the rest of it. Um, and again, thank you very much for all the lovely comments on that video. It is nice to get nice comments. Um, today I have for you cross stitching, quilting, knitting and crochet. Um, brief life update. I think February was spent uh, celebrating my father-in-law's 80th birthday. Um, so that was all good. And then March was absolutely manic. I had a week away at the beginning of the week, beginning of March, I had a week away at Kings Park Conference Centre in Northampton, which is only about an hour down the road. I'm a member of two cruelty groups locally. Um, a lot of the ladies overlap. We use the same facilities, just different day of the month. And um, I think I've been talking about my cross stitch retreats. And one of the ladies sort of said, oh, we ought to do a quilting retreat. And I think various, you know, people have been on various ones in the past. And um, one of the ladies said, well, I'll organize it. And she did, and it was absolutely great. It was a really good facility. We had a huge room, big table each, because obviously we all took our own sewing machines and things. Big table each, um, but in a big square. Plenty of room for the ironing boards, plenty of room to actually lay quilts down on the floor if need be. Um, there was a very nice sort of reception area you could go into and the food was great. It was all sort of, you know, buff buffet food that they served to you. Um, but yeah, it was all very good, very friendly staff, um, great facility. So that was a, we had good fun doing that. That was a good week. Um, I then had a couple of days down at the Cheltenham Festival racing. Um, so that was good fun as ever. I did have one winner. Sadly, it didn't <laughs> didn't cover all the losses and the alcohol and the food. <laughs> that was, it was good. Good fun was had. Um, I then had the I then had various just general things in between, and then I had the Essex Needles retreat um, at the end of March, which was organised by Elaine Ellywelly Stitcher and Trees Trees at Little Stitcher. Um, and as ever, that was a fantastic weekend. I didn't get there till the Friday evening. My daughter had a graduation down in Bath on the Friday. So we went down for that, um, which was nice. It was in Bath Abbey, which is quite an impressive building. Um, and then headed straight across and I got there sort of six o'clock Friday evening. But yeah, had a great time as ever, meeting up with everyone and sitting and chatting away with my friends. Um, so that was great. And we're now into April and full swing because I didn't get much chance in March and obviously because it hasn't stopped raining. Um, we're now full swing into the gardening. So I thought I'd film this first thing in the morning because I intend on gardening for the rest of the day. And uh, my hands will be disgusting by the end of it. They're only just possible now, as it is. Anyway, so cross stitching. I have worked on four pieces. Let me start with, sorry, haven't really thought about this um, video all that much. Long Dog Samplers Quilts. So this is what the finished project will look like. Now I needed a week of this. I think possibly in February, I haven't picked it up in March. And I have finished, I managed to get finished this, I finished this row and I've put this border in. So this is what I have got so far. Love the colours in this piece. So I only have only, so there's quite a bit of stitching in there, this bottom section to complete now. 
Um, so I really need to get on with it. My plan had been that I would pick this up once a month for at least a week and keep trying to churn it out so that I could get it finished. I didn't pick it up in March at all. Um, but there we go. I will come back to picking it up this year, this month. <laughs> pick it up this month and um, certainly try and get the first, half of the bottom finished. The border's a lot. The border is very... It's very easy, but it is intense. There's lots of colour changing, and so I might not. I might get either the border finished or the section finished, but I doubt I'll get both finished. But it is on its way towards a finish, so that it can languish in the bag of shame for months before I do anything with it. Um, the second piece I have worked on has been show you this piece oh sorry these are the very very raggedy colors dmc that i'm using in quilts from long dot sample um the second piece i have been working on and i've been basically trying to either do a thread a day or half an hour a day haven't kept up with that but i do keep on chipping away at it and it is amazing what you can get done is Elizabeth Bevan, 1835, from Hands Across the Sea Samplers. So this was my birthday start last year. Fantastic border on it, with lots and lots of animals in it. And, well, lots of birds and some animals. There's a wonky donkey. Yeah, lots of things. Lots of pretty, pretty things. So this is being worked on, I think this is a 36 count permanent, it could be 32, but I think it's 36 count permanent. It's in the frame, I might have to stand up a bit for you to see this. And so here we are. So I think the last time you saw it, I was probably about here. So I've finished the top and I've come down the side, I've done the lady in the blue dress. Although she hasn't got her, I don't think she has eyes, I think she just has a bit of a mono brow. Um, and there's the boy in the blue trousers. This oh, is one stitch over. I messed up on the first flower and didn't really think it through. I thought I'll just change it at the end. Of course, I changed it at the end and it was still, but it's only one stitch out and it doesn't really, it doesn't have any knock on effect on anything else. I've just got to remember not to work from it. Um, you know, not to count from it. Or if I do count from it, I need to really think about my counting. <laughs> so I won't be counting from it because that will just, I'll mess it up. But yeah, so I'm enjoying that. That will stay out and will, yeah, I will keep on trying to do either half an hour or thread a day and keep going. So I have just signed, these are the DMC I'm using. It's Charter for DMC or Soit Dagerre, I think. Dagerre. I'm using DMC because I am a DMC girl. Um, I have just signed up for the Hands Across the Sea Retreat 2025 in October, again in Swindon. Mm, semi tempted to try and get that one finished by then. I mean, it should be doable. When you do half an hour a day or, you know, one or two threads a day, you do chip away at it. Um, so yeah, I might try and make that an aim to have that piece finished. It's quite a big piece to have that piece finished by next October. What I haven't done, as you can see here, we've got lots of little, that's all back stitching. So I haven't done any of the sprigs, the spruces, the bits aren't done. I will do those before I move it down the frame, I think. Um, but I just haven't done them yet. Next piece I've worked on, and I have, it doesn't look like a lot of work, but I have got quite a lot of work done in this has been the Heartsease Example of Works, Antrim's Folly, Burlington to County Inspiration. So it's this huge piece here. I'm not doing this top section, so I'm just doing the middle, or the, the main piece. And this is a slightly more, this, I think this is a slightly better picture. So this is being done on 27 count Linda, so it's absolutely immaculate. Um, and I've gone wrong. <laughs> Already made a mistake. So I've basically worked my way along rows and trying to work my way all the way up to make sure I had enough fabric. Obviously I've got enough fabric, that's upside down. 
Um, but I thought, well, I'll just do it and try and get a bit of the skeleton in. And um, so this is where I am now. So basically, I'll show you the whole thing in a minute if I can fit it in. Um, so I have worked all this in. So I've worked the house in. So basically, I'd come up. I've worked from this side, actually. I worked this along, did the outline of the house, came down, got to this very end piece here, and I was one stitch short. Yes, yeah, so I had to cut one stitch off. I was like, oh God, where have I gone wrong? So I counted and recounted and counted and recounted and it was all correct. So I thought, right, well, I'll work my way back, filling in, particularly for this house, I wanted to get the windows, the outline of the windows in, because I think if you've got a house and you're one off in one of the windows, it just screams at you from a million miles away. So I thought, even if I can just make sure that the house is as it should be, then that's fine, we'll try and fudge it somewhere else. A lot of the trees are quite symmetrical, which was concerning me. We're obviously on that top row there. And actually, Stitchy Rach found it for me at the weekend. Um, I've gone wrong just in here, but all the windows fit, everything else fits. And I think the only thing, what I'm going to do, because I'm not taking it all out, is I've got a section of wall. So underneath these outer trees, I've got a section of wall and I'm just going to miss out one row of the wall and it will just mean that that tree just goes up the side of that once more, one further over, which is absolutely fine, because it's not symmetrical on the other side. What I didn't want to do was mess around at this end and then have irregular spacing or whatnot, but I think if I do it at this end, you won't notice the fact it's gone up one further over, because I'm not pulling it out. And don't really, oh, I do know where I've gone wrong. As I said, Rachel found it and it's just in here. I don't know, there was something I did two instead of three or three. No, I did, yeah, I did two instead of three. I think I should have done a third. But as long as the roof, the roof is what I'm going to go and do next. Because again, that is a checkerboard roof. So that needs to fit in. So as so long as the checkerboard roof works, it'll be fine. It's going to stay as it is. And this is the huge amount of DMC threads, all these lovely, lovely colours. See if I can twist these a bit, not really. Yeah. So I'm enjoying this again. I had said that my plan would be to pull this out at least once a month to work on it throughout the year. I want to try and make some inroads into this piece. Um, and so far I have. So that's good. And then the final project I've worked on. So I should have had a further project, but I just, whilst I like all the whips that I've got sitting in my basket, I just, nothing called to me. I wanted to carry on with this project and to carry on with the Antrim's Folly. Anyway, the last project I have to show you, the Huntsman from the Scarlet Letter. Yep, the Huntsman from the Scarlet Letter. So, and I am really, really enjoying this piece. Again, I am doing it all in DMCs. Yeah, those are the right ones, sorry. Doing it all in DMCs. And I have managed to <coughs> get quite a lot more outlining done and a bit of filling as well. So I think when you last saw me, all of this top piece, the blue, the trees, the big flower, etc were done and I think I had the outline of his hat and possibly his head. So I have outlined the horse, the two dogs. I've done occasionally when we've been watching TV, I've done bits where I have just filled in sausage fingers have been stitched. Um, so yeah, and then I have basically, I've come down, you see it's a bit, I'm jumping about a bit everywhere. Um, so I came down to the bottom because along, I'll show you again in a minute, along here we've got various flowers, there's a rabbit up here, or it could be a hare, um, and there's, and so I'm just starting to sort of try and bounce off of, count off of what I have stitched there to get these bits in because the rest of it is all just filling essentially, so I'm trying to get the outlines of these done, 
So if I show you here, sorry, the chair's moved all the way away. I'm now, so I've gone, there's a couple of flowers there. I've started these ones. So I'm just sort of working my way around so I can get up to the hair because it's a bit of a distance, or the rabbit, it's a bit of a distance from the, it'll be a hair, I think. Sorry, it doesn't really matter what it is, just stitch it. Um, yeah, and then get some of the, and then as you can see, all of the background is just fill in, which is absolutely great. So, I can't put this down at the moment. I really just can't put it down. And I need to, I need to work on the other projects. I want to get that quilt as close to finishing as possible. But yeah, for some reason, I just, I'm really enjoying what stitching on this at the moment. Um, but I will try and force myself to get work on something else. Right. Um, that is all the stitching I've done, as I said. I might pull out another project this month just to add a bit more interest into it. We'll see. I don't have any haul. Um, I was very good. I didn't buy anything at Essex. But I did win a prize on the raffle. And I won the Cricut Collection Trick or Treat designed by Vicky Hastings. So that is what I won. So So really pleased with that. I like that. I will I will be stitching that at some point. I'll get around to doing it. So whoever don donated that to the raffle, if you're watching, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, it was exciting to win something. And I think that is it for my cross stitching. Um, yeah, the most of February, um, as planned, most of February is spent taken up with my finishing, finishing a whole load of projects. Um, obviously had an entire week away where I was quilting where I didn't really stitch on anything. Um, and yeah, I'm just sort of getting back into the swing of it now. But it's good. There's four projects there. Anyway, quilting. What do I have to show you quilting-wise? Oh, so that's the end of the cross-stitching. If you're only here for the cross-stitching, thank you and hopefully I'll see you next month. Um, so quilting. I have two pieces really to show you. So the first piece, this is what I did whilst I was at the retreat. So you will have seen this before. The last, I think you possibly saw it in the last video, hanging behind me where it was, so I've still got lots of loose threads that I haven't cut off yet. Um, it was hanging behind me where I'd attached it to a bed sheet just to hang it up, to lay it out so that you could see it. And when this quilt retreat was first discussed and announced, I already knew what I wanted to do. I knew the pattern straight away that I wanted to do. I had the fabric in stock. That was great. And as time got nearer and nearer, I just didn't want to start a new project. I've got, so I had one which I have now fully finished quilting and binding, but I had that one to quilt and bind. I had this one to put together. I've got a third one that I'm going to tie, quilt it by tying it. I still need to do that. And I have my Jane Austen quilt, which I haven't actually brought in with me, um, that I'm working on as well. And I said, I don't want to start another project. And so I didn't. <laughs> Long story short, I didn't. I took this one with me, which is the Caution Curves Ahead by Jane Kingwell. It was a quilt along that I received from So Hot UK. Um, I've talked about this endlessly. I was struggling with all the curves, so a lot of the blocks I've changed, all the applique blocks I did, and I've really enjoyed doing the blocks where it involved all the curves, I just put my own blocks in. So I took this with me, squared everything up, and I have now actually put it all together. And it's funny, well, it might not be funny, but it's strange as possibly the way to do it. So, as I said, you would have seen this before behind me in my last video. I don't know. It's full of lots of lovely colours. The majority of these um, fabrics are laundry basket quilt, Edita Sitar. Um, I had three sort of selections, bed of roses. Maybe it was just bed, bed of roses in three different ways. And then I have added a few others in. But it's strange, I think because I have struggled with this quilt so much, and because I had to put my own blocks in, I was a bit like, oh, do I really like it? 
you know, I sort of felt like I was finishing it just for the sake of finishing it because I didn't want to not finish another quilt. And um, it wasn't until I put it all together, and even when I put it all together and put it on the floor, because I had it, I laid it out on the floor so I knew how I wanted to piece it all. And it wasn't until somebody held it up for me and I looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm really pleased with that. I really like it. So I'm going to put a border on it and obviously quilt it and back it. I'll just very simply quilt it because I am a simple quilter. Um, and hopefully that is one of my jobs for this month is to get this fully finished. And then the other quilt, which you have seen before, certainly the middle section finished, is my Lady Tulip quilt from Laundry Basket Quilts. There's a theme here. And um, I bought this again as a quilt along. I had the laser cut pieces sent to me. Um, and you know, it all went, I've, I've spoken about this a lot. It all went very well. It's all been very good. I really enjoyed making the quilt. I have finally put on the border and the binding quilted it i just for quilting i just went down down yeah and that's it because i don't think and then i've sort of done three or four stripes you can actually just see them going down there i don't think i'm going to use this as a working quilt um i really really like this quilt <clears throat> And I think I'm going to try and channel my inner Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I've bought some quilt hangers, some you'll see them later. Um, and I would like to get this hung up in the living room because I would like to have a space where I can change out quilts for the season. And this to me is very, it's quite springy. Um, well, it's called Lady Tulip. It was the fabric range Lady Tulip. But it's lovely, light colours. Yeah. It's all good. So hopefully, possibly, next year, next year, next month, we'll be in a different location and this will be hanging behind me. So, so yeah, so I quilted and bound that. Um, and then basically my quilting sort of stopped, but the purchasing began. So whilst we were away for this week, at, in Northampton there are two quilt shops in Northampton there are um so well just uh, on the edge of Northampton one is called Poppy Patch I didn't actually go to that one this time and the other one is called uh Bramble Patch and we went as a group trip to the Bramble Patch um I didn't need anything and it's it's a very nice store and it has an awful lot of fabric in it almost to the extent that unless you've gone specifically with a project in mind it's a bit overwhelming because actually you just want it all so then how do you pinpoint what you actually really really do want um so i had gone with the intention of not really buying anything as i said i didn't need anything for a current project i didn't particularly i didn't want to at that point purchase for an entire project um, so I went up to their sales section, which is where I always tend to go to begin with anyway, to be honest with you. And I picked up some lovely, so this is a Die Ford Hall piece. Lots of lovely colours and pretty motifs. I picked up this. Oh, did I pick up? Yeah, I picked up this panel or I picked up this. This is Die Ford Hall again. So actually, I think those two are the same fabric line. But yeah, so I've got two, four, six, twelve. Twelve of these circles to do something with, to put in a quilt. Sorry about folding it back up. Bought this, love, 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 love this. This is, so I'm just trying to see what. Yucca, no, Yuckata, Y-U-K-A-T-A by Debbie Maddy. But anyway, it's a lovely 
blue. I do like blue and brown together. I really do. In fact, I always kick myself. I remember the first time I went down to the Malvern Quilt Show in the spring and I'd bought the farmer's wife pattern, which I've never done. I will do one of these days. And there's this fabric range, fabric line at the time that I saw there that was browns, bright blues, dark blues and pink, and it was just gorgeous. And I didn't know any better. And I said to myself, oh, next time I'll make sure I've got the fabric requirements with me and I'll pick it up. Never seen it again, because you don't. Once fabrics are gone, they're gone. And, it's just like, oh. and so that was my lesson learned. But yeah, I do absolutely love that, browns and blues together. And then <laughs> the next piece I've picked up, which I've actually bought more of, sort of not realising I think I did realise but I do like it so it's absolutely fine this is a uh, chintz patchwork by the antiques textile company for Dutch heritage and there's this gorgeous greens little bit of blues and browns lovely 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 <clears throat> so I was sort of quite pleased with myself that you know I'd Bought it from the sale, really liked it. It goes with everything else. <laughs> Came home feeling quite smug that I hadn't spent a lot of money. And then Doughties, which is a, I don't know if you can go to their store. I don't know if it is a sort of in-store shopping, but certainly they're online and they do a lot of the shows and they actually do their own road show around England as well. Um, so I signed up for their mailing list, which is the worst thing I've ever done because they keep on sending me emails with um, sales and offers. And uh, they sent one through, yeah, I think close at the beginning of March or the middle of March, and they had all their Dutch heritage fabrics had a certain percentage off. And I've really, really liked Dutch heritage fabrics, but you don't see them all that often at the shows. I've seen the occasional jelly rolls or what have you. So I went a bit berserk and I ordered basically a bit of everything. So this is Lana's. <clears throat> so again, bird in the bush. Sadly, I don't think. Sorry, just maybe sit it that way. I don't know. Uh, so I've got one, two, three of these there. So sadly, I don't think these colours will go with my French general for my um, Jane Austen coverlet. Because that would have been perfect to put in the middle, whack a few things around the edge of it. Might could possibly look at this sorry that's a rather creased one there here we go i'll pair, look put these near it and see if these pair up at all i need i still need a big center medallion um for my jane austen couplet which i had thought i would applique but um if i can get a piece of fabric and cut it out that would be better so i might have a look and then no judgment, please. We've got just chintz everywhere. Just, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. So gorgeous. It was on offer. I haven't bought fabric for ages. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. I'm not going to go through them all. But you've got all these gorgeous, they're from various different lines. But, you know, they all just they all go they match in with my other reproduction fabrics look that is gorgeous just gorgeous do i have a plan no i don't have a plan do i care no i don't it's pretty fabric i wanted it so i bought it anyway this is just yes i'm not going to keep going on but Oh, look, there we go. So that's the piece I've doubled up on, but that's fine. It's a very usable piece in a lot of different... Talking about browns and blues, look at that. Um, yeah, 
just some These are fantastic. Whether are they upside down? Yes, sorry. Whether I fussy cut them or what I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so I think I really now have got to stop buying fabric. I really don't need any more fabric. Um, I've got various patterns that I would like to do, specific patterns that I would like to do. Actually, I do find, and they're, they're great because I've got fabric, so I've got like sort of a, a, an autumnal range of fabric that will go for that. I would like to make a pumpkin sort of quilt. Um, so I've got certain projects like that in mind that I'd like to do, but the rest of it, I'm a bit... I don't get bored following other people's patterns. But I think I would quite like to just do my own sort of sampler quilts, really. I find, yeah, just... I did quite enjoy on my caution curves ahead where there are no curves for me quilt where I made up my own blocks and put them together or not made but you know found blocks that I liked or thought, thought fitted in god all you're seeing there is four patches that's not bad things like these little sort of bar basket blocks and things I did quite enjoy doing that and I think I might sort of go down that route and I quite I like a pique I like a bit of embroidery I like doing a bit of everything on my quilt so rather than following some specific quilt designs I might just go a bit off piste and do my own thing we shall see as I said for the moment I want to quilting wise I want to get that one quilted and bound I want to get my other one quilted and bound and I've got my Jane Austen that I want to carry on with I haven't brought that in with me and so I'm not going to go and get it I did one more big diamond so I think I've now got four out of the old, I don't know, I think it's about 20 I need. Uh, yeah, so that's it quilting wise. So if you're, I'm now on to knitting and crochet. So if you're not staying for that, then thank you very much. And again, I hope to see you um, at the beginning of May. So quilting wise, I have three finished objects. So the first one is this pair of socks, which have been worn to death. Um, so I think I had one of these done and I was finishing all halfway through. They don't match, as you can see, they don't match because I don't, I need to find a video. Well, I know there are videos out there. I need to find a video to um, separate the yarn so that it does match. But this was, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Half it is in the foot, half, or half of it's in a shoe and half of it's underneath the trouser leg. You don't see it all that much. Um, this is King Cole Norse four ply. So yeah, very happy with those. My second finished object is what I am currently wearing. So this is the step-by-step -step sweater from, I think she's called Florence Miller on Ravelry, but she has a YouTube and certainly, certainly her YouTube and her Instagram is handmade by Florence. Uh, now she's a lady I started watching a while ago, uh, just her knitting podcasts, and she basically brought out this pattern as a, it's a step-by-step -step sweater and she did a video tutorial that takes you through all the steps and I know there are lots out there and they're all very good but this one for me just clicked I just went yeah I completely understand what you're doing why you're doing it and how you're doing it and so that's why I decided to follow this pattern and I'm really really pleased with it I do think it's supposed to be a mock funnel neck I think and mine I don't know I don't know if Everyone says they like it. I think it comes a little bit far out. But anyway, it's top down, raglan. Stand up. Remember to breathe in. Uh, so it's, it's a bit short. I did stitch to her required measurements. On the back, there are a few dodgy bits, obviously. You're not going to see those. Ribbing at the bottom, the raglan. Yeah, I did stitch to her required length under the arm. Um, and it is a little bit short, a little bit short. I mean, it's fine. I basically, I knitted this because I wanted to knit a jumper. I wanted to do a very simple jumper because I really didn't understand the construction of them, particularly the sleeves and how it all worked. And I used this 
Wendy with wool, Aaron Tweed, I think. Last time I said it was just pure acrylic, it's not. It's 20% wool, 77% of premium acrylic and 3% viscose. And have I got a colorway? No, I've just got a shade. Oh no, I have scree, 5702. So anyway, I've got another ball of it here. I picked, I'd picked these two balls up at our local garden centre. I think they were 4 99 each possibly. So that's 400 grams. I still have all of this left, so I could have made it a bit longer, but it's fine. All I wanted to do was to make knit a first jumper. And I just had it in the back of my mind that I would literally just use it to throw on in the morning to go swimming or to go to the gym, go swimming, and then, you know, put back on and come home and then I'd get properly dressed for the day. And for that, it does its job. <laughs> it's absolutely great. Um, yeah, it's very comfortable to wear. I think it fits quite well, with the exception of being slightly short. The sleeves I did keep going, although that's absolutely fine for me. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I think I did keep, because I, I was trying it on at that point. So I just kept going till I was happy with it. Long tail cast on, long tail cast off. Yeah, it was all good. Um, and I think she has, so I bought the two balls because I had no idea how much I would need to do a jump or to do anything with. So this second one, I think she had, it hasn't come out yet, but the Handmade by Florence has now got a step-by-step -step cardigan. And I've been watching it's the Itali an, an Italian knitter um, on YouTube, and she has just test knitted the cardigan for Florence along with other people, but she just happens to be a person that I'm watching. Um, and it looks fantastic. I mean, it looks fantastic because she's obviously a very experienced knitter and she's used some really, really pretty yarn. I will be using this again. It's cheap and cheerful. It doesn't matter if I mess it up. It's not the end of the world, etc., etc., etc. So when that pattern eventually comes out, I will try and do a cardigan. But I'm really, really happy with this. I love this jumper at the moment. I wear it an awful lot. I went swimming every morning in Northampton. Um, so I chucked this on, went swimming, came back, had breakfast. And it's funny because all the ladies that I quilt with, a lot of them are fantastic knitters, so much better knitters than I am. But I suppose it's just a generational thing because they are all, um, I wouldn't like to use the word significantly, <laughs> but they are older than me. Um, and they couldn't believe, they were like, I don't understand, you don't have any seams? I was like, no, I don't have any seams. And it's, we don't understand, what, you didn't knit from the bottom up, you knitted from, yeah, yes, I knitted from. So you're rattling of increases, not deep. Yes, they're increasing. Not deep. And they just could not get their head around. And they kept on sort of almost like lifting my arm up, going, well, where are the seams? There must be seams somewhere. I said, no, there aren't any seams. And I suppose they just don't particularly do Ravelry and YouTube. So for them, they just don't get it at all. But there's another story following on from that. But anyway, the second thing, no, the third thing. So this was the second. So the first was socks. The third thing I have finished is my Tolster tea. So this is a pattern from Rebecca. I think it's Clown. It's the Crea Bea podcast. So a lady up in Edinburgh. She does regular YouTubes. YouTube videos and she now designs quite a lot of patterns and this Tolster tee was the t-shirt uh, I don't know if it was last year or the year before essentially it's very similar to this top with regards to it's just a basic t-shirt and then you do what you want you can add stripes you can add lace you can, but it's just a very simple find what fits you and then do what you want with it. And so I thought, right, this is the next stage then. And this was the next stage because I used a slightly posher fabric for this or yarn for this. So I bought myself from Along Avec Anna, who again is a knitwear designer, and she has a walk-in shop in Exeter that we went to on, once on our way back from a holiday. And I bought myself 100% superwash merino, traceable, non Mule, mules, mulest, M-U-L-E-S-E-D. I think I vaguely know what that means. I don't know how to pronounce it. 108 meters for 50 grams, 22 meters, no, 22 by 10, 
No, that doesn't make sense. Ignore that bit. Four millimeter needles in the shade Jade, AV100. So I've still got one ball left because I really would rather over buy than under buy. I've had that where it didn't, uh, the dye lots didn't match. And I knitted myself this. So this is a very simple, again, top down raglan increases. So I might nip off to the side and swap clothing. I will be back in a minute. I'll try and be as quick as I can. Get my earring caught. Hopefully you can't see anything. Da, 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 da. Oof. Right. And I'm back. I'm back again. Right, so. Obviously it's different. Neckline, fits fine. I did knit my sleeves longer, so I think her sleeves sort of finished here. I just carried mine on and brought them down to the edge. Uh, it's quite tight, so I wasn't getting gauge. I wasn't getting gauge, and I think to get gauge, the needle size I had to use, I didn't like the fabric that was coming out at the end of it. So I decided to drop down a size because I basically worked it out that it would still fit. And it does, it does, it's absolutely fine. It's just possibly a little bit tighter. I think she sort of asked for a couple of inches of positive ease. I've got a bit of positive ease, but not a huge amount. I'm happy with the way it fits. I would knit this size again, probably, to be honest with you. I don't like having lots underneath my armpits and things. So yeah, and it just goes down. I can't get to the bottom, but there's just ribbing at the bottom. Um, with this, I knitted a bit shorter, so it stopped. I'd stopped at my um, stopped at my belly button because I suddenly realised oh, the the SW was for superwash. I thought, oh god, it's going to stretch <laughs> a bit. So then I blocked it, and it did. It did lengthen, um, and I sort of looked, I was really disappointed when initially I saw it that it lengthened. Oh, but actually it fits fine, I'd stop. So I think that is, note to self, basically most of these sort of things that I'm trying to knit, I just want to work out what size I do and don't need and how to work it. Because there's nothing more disappointing than knitting something to the length you think it's going to be for it to then grow an extra three inches. Um, so I'm just putting this on because it's a little bit chilly. Uh, so yeah, so other than that, oh, I had an issue. So I had this at the Essex Needles Retreat and I was picking up for the sleeves and I managed to pick up and twist every single stitch. So I basically had this line and I didn't really realise until I carried on a decent amount. I was like, oh, for goodness sake. And Elaine sort of told me what, Elaine Ellie Wells told me what I'd done wrong. I said, oh, I can't be bothered to frog it. I'll just do the same thing on the other side. And then the following morning, I just decided that I could be bothered to frog it. So I then had to frog it without a lifeline, go back, find the stitches. I think I was possibly two stitches too many because obviously you were casting on underneath or you were picking up stitches underneath as well. But yeah, so I didn't, because I was going to end up with two lines and that. Just take it apart and do it properly, which I'm glad I did do. And yeah, I really, really like it. It'll be interesting to see how often I do or what sort of weather it fits in for. Because obviously it's a merino, so it's quite warm, but with the short sleeves, We'll see, see how much I use it. But I'm really happy with it. I'm not sure this is particularly my colour, but it's what I chose at the time. Um, and I think for a sort of springtime knit, it's quite acceptable. So yes. Um, now, the next project I would like to start is the Felix pullover. I is it by Amy Christophers? I haven't really looked properly. Sorry. And, all. and I haven't got a photo to show. But I have got, so I've got, again, when I started knitting, as we all do, I bought lots of yarn and I've come to the decision that actually I need to use the yarn that I've got before I buy more yarn. So it's now a case of making, making the project fit the yarn. 
So the first one I'm tackling are these Wharf Mill Yarns Saddleworth. This is from Woolly Knit and it is a 100% British wool. And I've got it in khaki nep. So it is this green, but it does have, this one probably shows it a bit better, these little flecks in it. So that's fine. So the Felix pullover is essentially very similar to these two. It just has a bit of detail around the raglan increases. Um, when I say detail, holes. <laughs> a little bit of lace work, a few holes down here. Um, so yeah, so I am using this now. I couldn't get gauge again, but I have worked it out that well, I say I've worked it out, I've got John to work it out this time. I have worked it out that the gauge I'm doing will give me the size that I need if I go down a size again. Um, now this looks, obviously as I'm holding it here, it looks quite airy. But actually, if I just put it on my wrist, so I stand up so you can see a bit better, it really isn't that bad. Now, I think the Felix is actually suggested possibly for an hour and wait. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to be, I think this will suit me absolutely fine. I just want something again that I can throw for a t-shirt, use in the garden or whatnot. And it's not going to be too thick and heavy. So we shall see. I'm going to start, probably cast that on at some point this weekend. I've got to do a tubular cast on. Um, I did look at Very Pink Knits, a tutorial from her. Couldn't quite see what she was doing. So then I watched a, tu and she also seemed to do three or four steps. Then watched a tutorial from Stephen West. Um, and his made sense. And I was like, right, I'll follow that tutorial then. So yeah, I'll be casting the Felix pullover on at some point, either this weekend or next week, to use up my green yarn. So that will be quite exciting. Again, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I think I would have to do three quarter sleeves on this or certainly just down to, I think might be a little bit short of yarn. Um, and obviously I don't think that will grow per se. So I want to make sure that I've got the bottom done properly. And then if I just have it as the sleeves as far as I can, if I've got a long sleeve t-shirt on underneath, that's absolutely fine. So that's a plan, which I've actually skipped a project. Um, so, behind me here. Yarn porn. So I bought these when I first started knitting and I didn't know what I was doing. And I, I still don't know what I'm doing, but I bought these. You know, oh, pretty colours, I can make lots of things from. These are all four ply, 100% acrylic. And don't get me wrong, I love acrylic. I like acrylic, I don't have an issue with acrylic at all. But, so these are Yarn to Cone from Woolly Knit, 100% HB acrylic. I don't know what the HB stands for. And I've, I don't know how much is on a cone. But I've ummed and ahed about what to do with these for ages. And eventually I've sort of come up with something that fits, ticks a couple of boxes. So I signed up to a newsletter from Garlene, G-A-R-L-E-N-E. -E, and every month she sends out a dishcloth pattern. Um, and I've been, I mean, I've got about two years worth now of these dishcloths. And so I decided, because once I've finished the jumpers that I've got and the yarn that I've got, I would like to do something where I'm using two yarns together. So I've got a mohair in with a sort of a, a wool or what have you. Um, but knitting with two yarns, again, is like, it's the next step. So because those are four ply, I've decided to hold them double and to knit myself a whole load of dishcloths, but I'm not going to use them as dishcloths. I am going to make a blanket out of them. So this is actually, this is the second one. So this is, is that the right side or is that? No, I think that's probably the better side. So they're all patterned in some way, whether it's lace or fake cables or what it is, every month has a different pattern to it. But they're all, and this is where I need some advice, they're all similar sizes, 
but not 100%. So this was the first one that I did that, as you can see, has got, can you see? It's got this lace pattern around the edge. So it's fine. I really enjoyed doing it, but I managed to end up with two extra stitches. So I just decreased those at one point to get back to the correct count. So this was, I think, 43 stitches to cast on. This was 42. And they basically, I had a quick look through and they sort of range between, I'd say, 38 and 47. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get away with blocking them all to a similar size. So essentially what I'm doing, sorry, is I'm taking, balling up these and I'm just going to make a, well, I thought I was going to make a scrappy patch work blanket, just using all these different dishcloth patterns. And then I thought I would fill in with just some simple garter squares as well. So essentially I'm balling off 25 grams of yarn because I had no idea how much I did or didn't need. So when I bought off the first one thinking, hopefully that's enough, it was 25. So the second one came out of 25 and actually I only used something like 10 or 11 grams in this from both. So I have enough left over to do another square and I've done exactly the same thing. I just did another 25 grams and I will do a garter square, garter stitch square in this color as well. And I had initially thought I was just going to work my way through all of these colors. So we've got brown and then you can see the rest. With the exception of one, I was going to keep one and you a do a um, crochet them together, which would probably be either the dark grey or the light grey. So, am I going to, good day, my lord, good day, my lord, good day, my lord, sorry, that's a magpie out of the window. Am I going to be able to basically squish these all into, even if, I mean, so, 10 stitches is quite a significant difference, isn't it? Or do I just pick, and do I put all of those colours together? Or do I just pick two or three colours? And I really like this pattern. I don't know whether it's because this one isn't quite so uniform, because I know that, and I, because I know I've gone a bit wrong with it, that I don't like it quite as much. I just don't know, I haven't decided yet. So if you've got any cunning ideas, Please do let me know, as long as you're not offended if I don't then do them. As of to what I, whether I just make up how many colours I use and how many designs I use. And the biggest burning, most burning question is, can I, with 10 stitch difference, squidge or pull things to block them to the same shape? Because I don't think acrylic really moves that much when you block it, does it? Anyway, so I don't know. So I'm just fiddling with those. those are, that's just a long-term project to be done as and when. But they're quite good for in the car and things again. Um, and then the only bit of haul I have for knitting was, again, at this week away in Northamptonshire for the quilting, I was knitting, oh, I was knitting the socks, magically. And again, the ladies were, what dark magic is this? What are you doing? I said, it's socks. Oh, magically. No, you mean you don't use DPS? I said, no, I don't, because I don't like them. Um, anyway, so then one of the ladies said, oh, look, there's yarn on offer, sock yarn on offer for £2.50 a ball. Why don't we all buy a ball? And then Kirsty can teach us how to knit socks on Magic Leap. I've only knit three socks, or three pairs of socks. I have no idea what I'm doing. Inevitably, I go wrong somewhere. I always have too many stitches when I pick back up from the heel or too few, and I just fudge it. And I was like, really, it's going to be like the blind leading the blind. But anyway, by the end of it, I think there were nine of us there, eight of them, or seven of them, went, no, we're doing it and you're going to show us how to knit them. I was like, oh, God. okay, <laughs> that'll be fine. Um, so the balls of yarn that were, in, that were on sale I thought, well, I might as well get them as well. Elements Outlet Colour Kick, Blue Mix, 75% Superwash Wool, 25% Nylon, made under license in Turkey. And this one is the Pink Mix. So they're descriptive like that. So basically, these will just be striker socks. 
Now, whether I try and separate these into two balls and do them so the stripes actually coordinate, going down the leg or not, I don't know. But I've got more sock yarn. So that's now three balls of sock yarn I have, which is good. I do like socks. They're great for traveling and for all the rest of it. Uh, whether I like them when I've had to teach seven other people how to knit them. Well, I don't know what I'm doing myself. I don't know. We'll see. And then the final thing I have to show you is my crochet blanket. Oh, gonna have to uh, I thought I'd left a stitch marker in, but it turns I don't think I have to as in to show you. Oh, I have found it. I looked for this this morning, couldn't find it. Now I can find it. So, this is just a scrappy crochet blanket, basically granny square stripe. Um, I got the pattern from Attic 24, I've tweaked it slightly. When I say I've tweaked it slightly, I went wrong on the first couple of rows and then just decided to incorporate that and make it part of the pattern. Um, and this is just using up all and every yarn. So this will be going in there at some point. Uh, this won't, this is, I've got enough of this, I can actually do something with it, whether it's a scarf or a headband or what have you. But yeah, on the whole, whatever is left over will get thrown into this blanket until it is big enough. And I think, I did just see, I just saw a stitch marker. Oh, for the, oh, there it is. Right, so since you last saw me, can you see that green stitch marker in the orange, basically? I've now worked up to here. And then if you look at it this side, because I do just, it breaks in the middle and it goes up, but the whole thing is now, looking like so we start there we go so again i haven't worked on that actually for a little while because i've been doing all this knitting but i will bring that out again that's just a very good mindless project for when you're watching tv or you're just tired um so that will keep going until it either reaches the size that i'm happy with or i run out of yarn in which case i'll have to buy some more make some more things and have some more scraps um, so I think that's about coming to the end. I haven't got any more to show you. Very quickly, we've watched The Gentleman on Netflix. That was fantastic. I think 90% of people have watched it. If you happen to have not watched it, I would recommend watching it. Really, really good. And we are currently watching Three Body Problem, which is like the second most trending thing on Netflix at the moment. And it's good. It is good. It's nothing like we would normally watch it. It's basically sci-fi, essentially. Oh, it's very sci-fi based. Um, and John chose it, <laughs> but actually I do really like it. I do, but it, and it is one of those ones where he says, oh, should we watch another episode? I go, oh, yeah. And then within five minutes, I'm straight back into it and I really enjoy it. So again, I think it's only eight episodes. We've watched five of them so far. So again, if it's not normally your sort of thing, like I would never have thought to look at it, it is worth watching. It is actually really good. I'm just hoping at the very end, they give a very clear description of what actually has actually happened because <laughs> a little bit of it, I found a little bit confusing, but there we go. So anyway, that's it. If you've stayed this long, thank you very much indeed. Um, and I hope you have a good April. I hope you had a good Easter. I hope you've got lots of chocolates to eat. And um, I will see you hopefully at the beginning of May. Take care, bye.